Before we can use statistics to work out what we're doing with our data and to answer our question, we need to think about what sort of data we have because that influences what you can do with it. There are two main sorts of data. Categorical, where you count an object or a property of an object. And there's also numerical data, where we're counting the number of times a number turns up. For example, the number of cups of coffee someone drinks. Within categorical data, there are two main sorts, nominal and ordinal. Ordinal, if you think about it, sounds like order. So in ordinal data, there is some sort of order. In nominal data, there are just categories. An example of nominal data are types of dogs or breeds of dogs, such as Collie, Rottweiler, etc. In ordinal data, the categories have some sort of order. An example, a good example of that is on a student's report, where their attitude can be excellent, very good, good, satisfactory or not satisfactory. We all know that excellent is better than very good, and very good is better than good, etc. So there is an order in the actual categories that we're counting. For numerical data, there are two main sorts, discrete and continuous. With discrete, you can only have fixed values and no in-between values. Often, this means whole numbers. So, for example, points scored in a game of football, you cannot score 63.5 points in a game of football. You can only score 63 or 64. There are no in-between values. The number of students that are doing something has to be a whole number. You can't have a half a student doing something. Continuous data, on the other hand, can have in-between values. So, for example, if I'm looking at the height of a student, I could measure a student as being 164 centimetres or 165 centimetres, but also 164 and a half or 164 and three quarters. All sorts of fractions in between are possible. The same with change in temperature. The change in temperature could be 3.1 degrees, 3.6 degrees, 3.516432 degrees. They can have all the values in between. They're not fixed to certain values. Here are some examples of some data being collected. And let's see what sort they are. So for the first one, we've got favourite internet social media sites. Now they're, they're not a number, they're a category because they're a type of site. So that's a category. And there is no order inferred, so it's nominal. The next one, the number of pens in a year nine student's pencil case. That's numerical because the number of pens is a number and it's discrete because you, we won't be having half pens or we'll just be counting whole pens. The number of bikes in the bike shed each day, again, is numerical because it's a number of bikes that we're looking at and it's discrete because we don't have half bikes. The next one, by, um, eye colour for year nine students. That's categorical because it's a colour, it's not a number, and it's nominal because there's no inferred order in colours. The next one, income of footballers, that's numerical because it's a number, being dollars, and even if it was cents, it's still a number, and it's discrete because income won't be fractions of a cents. The next one, transport come used to come to school each day again that's categorical because it's a type of transport it's not a number and it's nominal because the type has no um, order inferred in it one type of transport is not taken to be better than another attendance at school is numerical because we count the number of days that someone's attended or even if we count the number of periods we won't be counting any fractions so that's discrete the mass of a canteen chip bag, again, is numerical because we're measuring how much mass it has. And because we're measuring it, the actual number can be any number. So that's actually continuous. 
And the last one is categorical, because uh, students' report will have things like good and very good, which are not numbers. And it's ordinal, because there is an inferred order. Excellent is better than very good, very good is better than good, etc. When collecting data, usually the best thing you can do is to ask the entire population or measure the entire population to find out what everybody actually thinks. And that happens if we have a vote for government. Everybody is expected to vote and give their opinion. Also, if we have the census, which happened recently in Australia, the census is actually asking everybody in the population to tell the government some information about themselves. So a census is when you ask the whole population or measure the whole population, every value is looked at. That's not very realistic in real life, so usually we do a survey. We ask some of the people. An example of that is the polls that come before an election where they ask a couple of hundred people what they, who they were going to vote for. The other way of collecting data is by using an experiment and actually measuring the data and seeing, doing enough measurements to be sure of your answer. So when we're sampling, there are three ways of sampling. Random sa selection, stratified selection, or biased selection. A random selection means you're asking some of the people in a random way by using, say, throwing a dice or generating a number with a computer program so that you get a good spread of people. In a stratified selection, you're making sure that each representative group is asked. So, for example, if I was measuring the heights of students in Year 9 and I was doing stratified selection of, say, 30 students, I'd need half of those students to be girls if half the students in, this, in Year 9 are girls. With a biased sample, it just means that you're not doing that properly. So, for an example, if I was measuring the heights of students in Year 9 and I only measured the 14-year-old students, that would be biased because there are some 15-year-old students and they're probably taller. So when we're collecting data, we have to decide whether we're going to do the whole population or just sample some of the population. That If we do the whole population, that's a census. If we do a sample, it's a survey. And if we measure things, then experimental results will be measured. And we have to decide what sort of sampling we're going to do, whether it's random or stratified. We don't want it to be biased. When you sample a population, the biggest thing you have to be careful about is not being biased. The selection method must be representative. So here's some examples of bad sampling. A music company wants to find out how popular Justin Bieber is, so they ask the people living in the local retirement home if they like him. I would think a lot of people in retirement homes wouldn't know who Justin Bieber is. The AFL asks Richmond, cheer squad, who is the best player in the AFL. They're more likely to pick a Richmond player because they're biased towards Richmond. A TV station does a phone poll asking, do you think we should pay more taxes to pay for better roads? Obviously that's a biased sample because the people that ring up are going to be the ones that don't like it. The ones that don't really care so much probably won't ring up as much. So here are some examples about collecting data. In the first one, 20 Year 9 students have collected, have collected data about their spending habits to find the average spending for students. That's a sample. And that should be a random sample. The force measured in Newtons needed to lift the bowling balls. That's experimental. The average age of students in your class, you could actually measure the whole population of that because there aren't, there's only 20 or so.